Well, welcome back. This is Dave from ERC, and we're continuing our build on the Dancing Wings Eagle 1200 millimeter. Now, some people have said I've been speaking really fast during the video, and I can guarantee I've not sped up my voice at all in the video at all. What I did was I compressed the video so it's shorter, and then did a voice overlay over that to make it a little bit more palatable. I mean, long videos can really be a trouble on YouTube. People have a short attention span these days. And making it too long just really slows the whole thing down. So in this video, we're going to be working on the main wing right here. And I'm going to be adding ailerons. And that means, of course, adding two aileron servos and a Y connector right here. And then on top of that, we're going to be putting a battery box inside here or a battery tray inside here to put the battery on, which isn't included in the kit, so that's another mod. And then finally, sealing up the bottom, because I left the bottom open until this video. Okay, so let's just fly right into it. Okay, getting ready to glue the two wings together and using fabric tack once again. So I'm gonna apply some to one side, press them together, and then pull them apart and let them tack up. Okay, now that it's had time to tack up, let's go ahead and press the wings together. Now I want to make sure that they're perfectly aligned right in the front and also in the rear. And then just press them together and then I'm going to put a box on it for weight while it dries. This is actually just a box that got some batteries in it. Getting ready to put in the wing spar. I've got this right here. This is just some foam from the kit that goes on the end of the wings. Just put that underneath and the reason for that is I'm going to add a little bit of dihedral to the wings. I'm just going to use some CA. The SIG CA doesn't dry all that fast. Put the spout in and drag it down the line so the CA gets in the crack. And then I'll just push that wing spar in there. So I'm getting ready to put the ailerons onto the wing. And this is a diagram that I got off RC Groups. And then I did a ratio of the picture to the actual size of the wing to come up with these numbers. And I came up with 225 millimeters long and 196 millimeters back from this front edge right here. So I used the square to make the measurement from the front edge 225 millimeters. Just marked it with a grease pen. And then as far as the width goes, it's just judged by these lobes right here. There's three on the wing tip and then four on the inside. And that comes out to about 225 millimeters. So there's my three and I've got four down here, but the overall length is 225. So the next phase is to cut it out with an X-Acto blade. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the ends first. No big mystery there, just cut both ends. It's really soft, cuts easy. So I'm going to have a bevel on this, and I think what I'm going to do is cut a bevel just behind the line for the hinge. So I've made a mark here and a mark down there, and then I'm just going to line my ruler up to those like that. So I'm just going to lean the knife and cut along that line. Let's go on a bevel, and just keep it against the ruler all the way down, keeping the angle as you go. Same angle all the way. Now that gives me my bevel right here. On the aileron, I can just cut this line right here straight down, but I may add a bevel to that later. So I'm just going to go straight down on the aileron and make it square. But I may add a bevel to it later on. And there's how the edge fits up against the bevel. And that gives me a little area for it to bend. Now I'm just going to trim off a little bit of each end so that it doesn't rub against the main wing. And that will give me extra space for it to go in there without rubbing. I think I am going to bevel this piece just a little, but I'm not going to cut it all the way down to the base, just some off the top corner. Just taking off a little bit along the edge right there. I think that'll give me just a little bit more throw. And that gives me a pretty big bevel. So next I've seen the diagram that there's some carbon fiber on each of these ailerons. Okay, just cutting some pieces of carbon fiber. Just going to be a little bit shorter than the control surface, just like his picture. Just using these to do it, I'm going to make them the same length. Now we're going to go ahead and score these and glue them in. So there they are, I cut some slots with an X-Acto blade and loaded it up with CA glue and pressed in the carbon fiber. I'm going to use some of these Dubro nylon hinges to hinge the control surface. I'm going to show you how to do it later, but I just cut some slots in with an X-Acto and then use the fabric tack to glue it in. What I do now is I just lay it next to the wing and make a couple of marks where the hinges are going to go. And then just take out the X-Acto blade and cut the slot on a slight up angle so that you don't punch through the top of the wing. And just make it deep enough for the hinge to go in. So now I'm test fitting the hinge assembly to make sure it fits in.
Okay, now we're going to glue it in using the fabric tack. It's the same thing I use to glue the hinges into the ailerons. So I'm just going to go into the crevice and pump some glue in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of each hinge. I don't want to get it near the pin or that'll bind up the hinge. And then we'll go ahead and place it into the slots. Just take your time, no hurry. The glue actually sets up very slowly so you have plenty of time to do it. So there it is, it's in there. We'll just probably let it dry overnight just to make sure. Now I'm just going to do the other side the same way. So next I'm going to mount the servos into the wing. And from the diagram, they go back about 40 millimeters from the tip of the wing spar. So I went back 40 millimeters and just took my pen and drew an outline around it. Then I take the X-Acto blade and measure the depth with my finger and just use that as a guide while I cut it out. Then I just stripe the section that I want to cut out. And then I can start peeling it out with a drill bit, which grabs the foam pretty nicely. And then you can just remove the pieces and it's not going all the way through the wing. It's only just the depth of the servo. So it looks like we have a good fit. So the hole's all cut out, now I can insert the servo. And then I just want to cut a line for the wire to go in so the wire can go up to the middle of the wing. So just cutting the line down the ruler and then around to the servo. So I'm just going to use a little bit of foam tack as usual to hold the servo in and I don't think I'm going to put any on the bottom because I might want to remove the servo later and this way I'll just put it on the edges so that it'll just hold it good but not make it impossible to remove. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert it into the hole and just let it dry. And now I'm going to start running my wire and I can use a barbecue skewer to do that or just use my fingers. So pushing the wire into the slot all the way down to the middle. So I put the servo horn on it and aligned it with my servo tester to make sure it's in the neutral position up and down. I finished putting in the wire and now we'll move to the other side. Before I install the second servo, I'm going to connect it to the servo tester and make sure both servos run opposite to each other because the ailerons have to be opposite. So the Y connector is connected to the servo tester and they both do move opposite. So I'm going to install this carbon fiber and I'm going to put it edgewise into the wing right here which is a little different than the directions. I cut it with my X-Acto blade and now I'm just going to go ahead and put some CA on it and then press it into the wing. But I've seen it on RC groups and it seems to work well and also holds the rubber bands. I think this will give the wing strength so it won't split across the front easily. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to do the rear carbon fiber. Just going to put a little glue along here and then rock it into place and then hold it while it dries. So I didn't want to hold it with my fingers, so I'm going to go ahead and put some clamps on, one on each side, and maybe one in the middle. So I installed the servos and the linkages according to the diagram here, and here they are. I got them hooked up to the servo tester. Now let's just give them a little test. So that part is done. I got these servo rods and servo horns from a collection of parts that somebody gave me. So now that the servos are done, let's go ahead and put on the wingtip feathers. So the basic idea is to line up these sort of notches here where the straight section ends on each side of the feathers to the top of the wing surface so that the patterns also line up. So right there would be about right. So using some of the fabric tack that I got from Walmart, we'll go ahead and do the fabric tack thing, putting some glue on, pressing it together, pulling it apart, and then finally gluing it down. So pressing it on there, pulling it apart, and letting it tack up. So now that the glue is set up for a minute, I'm going to apply the piece back to it, and then I'll just press it until it adheres to the wing. Here's what it looks like on the bottom, and you can see the excess there. And I'll have to cut that off later. So here the wing is drying. I've got the wing feathers on there and drying. Next thing we've got to do is glue on these ornamental pieces on the front of the wing. And again, using the fabric tack. I already applied some to it and pressed it to the wing. And now I've let it tacked up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and press it on there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and press it on here. I'm going to keep it in the center. Trying to keep it parallel with the bottom edge of the wing while maintaining the center on the front edge. There it is, about in the middle of the wing, vertically. Now I'll just go ahead and put the other one on and let it dry. So I've propped up the wing so it's kind of vertical and we'll just let those pieces dry. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and trim off this piece that's sticking down on the bottom. It's just a matter of running the knife along the bottom edge. I'm using a standard box cutter from the hardware store. Now if you don't get off enough the first time, you can always go back and trim a little more off. It cuts fairly easily. You might want to just take off a little piece here, for example. 
All right, that looks pretty good. So there's the piece I cut off right there, and it was fairly easy to remove. Easier than I thought it would be. So with the eagle balanced somewhere around 40 to 50 millimeters, I've got the battery placed right behind the stick, the front stick where the rubber bands go. So the battery comes out right about there. So that's my first test of the CG. So now that we know where the battery goes right here, I'm going to make a battery tray to fit in the bottom at about the same location. I haven't covered the bottom yet to allow for these different mods I'm doing. So here's the battery box that I just made, and I've made it the same width as the bottom plate right here. So it'll fit in the hole without spanning the sides too much. The construction of it is just some of that 1 32nd inch plywood and some popsicle sticks glued on with CA. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some of this Velcro hook inside it to hold the battery. And then I'm going to use the foam tack to glue it inside the fuselage. So I'm gluing in some 32 millimeter pieces of popsicle stick just for the battery tray to rest upon. So one right here, one right here, and there's two on the other side. So the tray can rest against those. The tray is 110 millimeters long, and of course it's the same shape as the bottom cover. Now we're going to go ahead and place it in there now that the Fabri-Tac has had a chance to set up. I'm going to place the tray in there at the lines that I've already drawn on the side. So now it's down in there resting on top of the popsicle sticks. So after that cures we can put the cover on and I think the cover will fit just right because the spread is the same as the cover. And you can see it fits just perfect. Let the tray dry and then we'll be ready to put the cover on. This is what it looks like from the top. Now that the battery tray is all dry I'm going to do the final touch and put the bottom cover on. Now it goes in between the two sides, not on top. And again I'm going to put the foam tack along the sides and then press it up against the edges and then pull it back apart, let it tack up, and then finalize it. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. So I just put the glue on it, press it in there, and then pull it apart and let it tack up. Alright, time to put it on. So I'm just going to press it down until I get about where that wood is, and then feed it in. Just going along, sometimes you have to stretch the size a little bit to get it in there. I've tried this a couple of times without the glue just for practice, so that's probably a good idea to do that. So it's in there, so let's just let that dry, and this bird will be done. So the manual says the flying weight is 450 grams, and on my scale here, I'm getting 400 grams. That's without the battery. Now if I put one of these batteries, the 1500 milliamp hour 3 cell, I'm going to get 522 grams. Of course, that'll vary depending on the size of the battery that you have. So that's it. Looks like it's around 400. Okay, so the next thing will be to take it out for a test flight and see how it actually flies. See you then.